Even some Democrats are now openly admitting that the concerns about President Joe Biden's age have validity. Per Politico, newly elected New York Congressman Tom Suozzi dryly referenced the elephant in the Oval Office by saying, quote, the bottom line is he's old. Meanwhile, Congresswoman Katie Porter planted the seeds of term limiting older elected officials, telling Politico, quote, we're having that conversation and that debate about the Supreme Court. And I think it's hypocritical for us to not be thinking about having it, given we have some of the same long term representation that we have. Mm. Our next guest read the tea leaves long before mainstream media caught on. A year ago, in an article titled Six More Years, the American conservative Kurt Mills wrote, Fair or not, many Americans harbor doubts about the validity of Biden's election and most seriously, his medal for the job. Joining us now is executive director of the American conservative Kurt Mills. Welcome to Rising. Thanks for having me. All right. So you were willing to say out loud what not many people were willing to say back then, although I do always want to shout out the fact uh, that two of the 2020 uh, candidates, uh, Julian Castro and Cory Booker, both did bring up Biden's age on the debate stage and after and seemed to never recover uh, in the eyes of the Democratic elected for, for doing so. So I don't know if it was that people were unable or unwilling to or they just didn't want to suffer the consequences with the Democratic Party machine for pointing out the obvious. But I want to give you the floor to talk about what you think about the fact that this has all now come out into the open after all this time. Yeah, so I think a few things are happening here. Uh, first, I actually think the Republicans, to a certain extent, cried wolf in 2020 by raising his age, which has distracted from the decline that I think is now more perceptible uh, in office. So the Biden of 2020 is actually somewhat underrated uh, compared to what the Republican messaging was, and it sounds just the same. Meanwhile, the Democrats have sort of drunk their own Kool-Aid and pretended there's not a problem. I think additionally, um, there is some uh, fear on the Democratic side, uh, which is obviously the more politically correct party, uh, from offending uh, a, a pretty quickly aging country. Hmm. So we are at this point where a lot of people are wondering whether Joe Biden could be successfully replaced as the Democratic candidate. He would obviously need to step aside. Um, Ezra Klein openly speculating about this at a contested convention uh, kind of scenario. Um, what do you make of, of this kind of speculation uh, that he might not actually be the candidate? I think it's good for shows like this and bad for prediction. <laughs> I think there's almost no chance he'll be replaced. Um, I mean, look, if he decides one morning he can't do it, like he is the president of the United States and he can't do it, and history has weighed heavily on this guy. He's been in national politics since 1973, um, and Johnson resigned, I believe, or announced his lack of efforts to run for re-election in March of 68. So it's not impossible, but it's just really, really, really late. It's very, very clear that Biden wants to run. And it's not even particularly clear, in my opinion, uh, that Biden isn't the actual best candidate. He's the incumbent president. Um, and for a lot of people, uh, the sort of you know fixture of a moderate old white guy um, is actually comforting uh, if they nominate somebody who is seen as uh, for the left or more woke or younger. Um, it, they might not be able to hold their you know fairly narrow coalition together. Ezra Klein's uh, controversial on the left or among liberals take is not that Joe Biden isn't fit to be president, but that he was is fit to is unfit to run a campaign. Basically saying that, yes, we have to acknowledge that there is a decline here. I, I feel sorry for the guy, but it doesn't seem like it's actually affected his leadership. No one can point to any decisions that would have been made differently if he were, say, the more sprightly version of himself from four or 10 years ago. But that Quite obviously, what is required of you in a campaign to go out, do glad handing, to make speeches, to participate in debates, um, to show uh, a, a level of vigor that inspires the American public, that is where he's failing. So I wonder if you sort of agree with that take or are liberals trying to kind of uh, split the baby on saying, oh, it's really not that you should be concerned that he's president, just that he can't run for president? I mean, it's not like this is good. Um, we're getting into a point, this is not a unique observation, I think Nate Silver made it yesterday, that we're getting into a point where it could be just rational for Biden effectively not to even try to run, yet appear on the ballot. That campaigning would become a negative asset. But mm -hmm. there's no there's no law that you have to appear in rallies. There's no 
law that you have to go to events. There's no law that you have to go to debates. Um, he could just try to be the non-Trump person on the the ballot. That's I think that's you know effectively a perfectly rational uh, strategy, um, and it, it might be actually a more prudent one than trying to run Harris or. I mean, there's, there's so much ink spilled on Gavin Newsom, but do they really want to uh, reverse it, uh, make it a referendum on California and California's management under Newsom? I'm not so sure that that's a, a such a clean trade. Hmm. So the polls currently show Trump up, I think, nine points. That's what we covered in our top of our show. Um, ahead in many of the swing states, um, RFK Jr. having a, a, a splash as the kind of third man in the race. Um, you know, there there was a long time uh, kind of thinking among some pundits that well, it would it, the race will get closer once people once Trump is very clearly the nominee. People hear from him more often. He starts you know reminding your swing voters, your moderate voters, what they dislike about him, and Biden will get some kind of boost. That certainly hasn't happened yet. Even though I'd say it's pretty clear Trump is going to be the nominee, unless there's some really exceptional legal circumstances. Um, at this point in the race, the polls do have some predictive power and they show Biden certainly behind. Um, do you think, is this going to be like a low turnout election where everyone is you know, so dissatisfied with the candidates they have before them, but, but Trump is on pace, if we're believing the polls, to, to pull that out? Is for his, his people are less dissatisfied than Biden's people. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I don't think it's going to be a particularly low turnout election. American federal elections have had higher turnout turnout in the last 10 years, and I believe, than they did in the 2000s. Go back and look at the 2004 turnout. It was it was, it was closer to 50 percent. I believe we're well over 60 percent now. I don't expect us to get much lower than that. Maybe it's a little lower than 2020 or 2016, but I'm not sure it particularly matters. Um, look, I'm not sanguine on this. I think a lot could change between, you know, February 21st and uh, November, whatever. Um, but I think people are actually kind of overrating the amount that which which could change. I think we all, all have sort of PTSD from COVID. Um, we are all kind of waiting for the other shoe to drop. I think, look, the polls are directionally true. Like uh, they're not they're not uh, a hard science, but like people look at them for a reason. We're talking about them for a reason. Trump's ahead. Trump's never been in this kind of polling position ever. Right. He, he was down in 16 to Hillary. He was down more to Biden. Uh, there ended up being a polling error in Trump's favor in both 16 and 20 and 16 and made him the president. Um, Trump has, a, you know, a, has the most commanding lead he's had as a as a Republican presidential candidate in these polls. I think they're directionally true. I think he's favored. We keep talking about age, but it does seem like it's much more about uh, his apparent cognitive fitness than it is about a particular number. There are other old folks in Congress. Uh, Donald Trump, liberals often point out, is really very similar in age to Joe Biden. Bernie Sanders is old, but does not seem to be facing some of the same challenges that Joe Biden is facing. Uh, given that this may be not an issue of chronology, but mental fitness, what do you make of suggestions like the one by Katie Porter that there do need to be some sort of age terms on candidates and other elected officials? Uh, I mean, I don't agree. I don't think we need to create more rules. I mean, I think that's a sort of parody of a sort of center-left democratic solution, just make another law to solve something. I think if, if Americans think that Biden is disqualified from the role based on his age, they should vote him out. Um, that's that's my view. Um, I think people obviously age differently. Uh, to comment on the three people that you named, um, I mean, Trump is obviously like a super weird guy. This is like strange diet. Doesn't really exercise. He's under more pressure he, 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 than ever before. He seems to thrive under that pressure. Um, Sanders. I mean, I think some of it is that Sanders kind of has the same stock and trade stump speech that he always has, and so it's a little easier. And then Biden has to change his opinions and be a Machiavellian on everything, and so I think that's gets harder to do in your ninth decade. I don't know. I I, th I do think there are substantive dish uh, issues there. I do think that Trump is less cognitively frail than Biden. Um, and obviously, I say that as someone who's not ideologically aligned with him. And I think that Bernie Sanders, he was recently um, got, went viral in a clip where he was really pressured on his views on Gaza yeah. uh, and, I, and then I think uh, Ireland, and is nimble, saying things that I don't agree with, but is nimble and able to follow the thread of the conversation, doesn't need to have the same word-finding problems that Biden has experienced. People like Noam Chomsky are very old and seems to still be very engaged. So I, I do think that right. there are real differences here, but I, I do tend to agree with you that I'm not sure that um, I would focus on 
limiting age as much as I would have an interest in term, term limits, um, because I think that the entrenched nature of our political system is more important than the actual um, frailty of some members of that system. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. This has been a really interesting conversation. Of course. Thanks for having me.